Before this episode begins, just a quick reminder that we are not professionals in any way. The views, information or opinions expressed in this podcast are solely the views of the individuals involved and by no means represent absolute facts. Opinions expressed by the hosts and guests can change at any time. G'day listeners, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It. We are your hosts Jacob and Josh. So we'll get straight into the introduction. Today we'll be talking about postmodernism and its ideologies. Now, <laughs> Josh and I have been speaking a little bit just before and... Uh, this will be an interesting one. I'm already like, right, let's hurry up and get this over and I done with. We, oh my God. Right. I even started, sorry, even researching for this, I was like, I don't want to do this one. <laughs> I mean, this isn't going to be an episode that covers anywhere near all of it. There's just no. way too many angles. And no. Especially absolutely. if you want to go into the history of the different philosophies and stuff of it, it just, it's a maze. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, the introduction. In this episode, we'll be looking at the dogma and history built around the idea of everything being constructed from the perspective of power and it trying to keep a certain peoples or groups beneath them, a.k.a. postmodernism. We will analyse how it has con- coincided with other mainstream perspectives and its place in modern-day society. <sighs> I wrote, we wrote this before we uh, started actually doing research and I don't even feel like it's <laughs> even... It doesn't even allow you to look at the nail to hit the nail on it. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. This is uh, uh, it's a very big topic, yeah. and you kind of had. I mean, I know we had somewhat of an understanding of what it meant in today's political playhouse <laughs> that we live through. But I started uh, listening to it, and I listen. I ended up listening to that book like two or three times because really. It, it was yeah, I listened to it the first time and I was like I need to listen to that again because there was just so many parts where I was like what the fuck yeah. and that was explaining postmodernism by Stephen Hicks and it goes through not just postmodernism but where it started and like every single philosophy branch that came before it during it after it around it through it everything it was just like one after because it's so many people and there's so many different branches and they all have their different ideas and some of them sound fucking ridiculous some of them have decent points and then make them super political out of nowhere and where it kind of starts off is you have the whole idea of the enlightenment which is where we originally get our modern day sciences and the original use for postmodernism or at least the way of postmodernistic thinking was it was originally used by what could be described as the far right religious groups as a way to defend themselves from the ideas of the enlightenment because the enlightenment took a world and it's kind of weird to think about a world that existed pre-science like no chemistry no biology no physics None of this stuff. In the sticks, pretty much. We had natural theology, which was a religious thing that ended up developing into science. But then, in the end, science ends up killing religion. So, with the sciences, it's all about finding reason and rationality within the world around us. Finding reason within nature's biology. Finding reason within the mechanics of our world is physics. And essentially, the postmodernistic thinking of the time was... Reason doesn't exist. You've invented it. All these sciences that you've developed don't actually connect to reality or the numinal numinal realm, as they called it back then. It was the idea that you impose your ideas onto your reality. The reality doesn't impose them onto you. The consciousness, the idea of the consciousness is that it's, at least in our thinking, it's functional and it's cognitive. So, it's cognitive. It takes in all the information of the reality around us and allows us to perceive reality. And then it allows us to function within that reality. So, all the information we find within that reality is based in reality. But according to the postmodernistic thinking is that conscious is only functional. It's not cognitive. You can't... Everything you see is you imposing yourself onto the reality. It's you functioning. It allows you to function within the world you perceive around you. 
but that's not reality. It's how you see the world. That isn't an objective reality, which then completely dismisses sciences because sciences rely on your senses. Use your senses to collect the data, to collect the information, and then use that, use scientific method in inquiry to dissect that down to methods, equations, all that stuff. If reason, if that whole perception, if your your ability to gather information based on reality and turn that into a like, reasoning behind it, if you dismiss the reasoning ever existing in the first place and the information not even being reality, well, then you completely dismiss science. And that was the original purpose of postmodern thinking because if you do that, then you can't criticize religion. And religion's whole thing was like, if you feel it, if you have the passion and the feeling, say, for example, if I feel that there's a God, if I feel an almighty being that keeps the world in whatever state it is, and I feel that with passion inside of me, and that's feeling, well, that feeling's based in reality, and therefore, it's more real than your science. And it's, <laughs> and the problem is, is like, where do you go from that? You can act upon that will and that's religion but in terms of where we live today if you're someone who developed in that direction and not the direction of reason and science you're living in two completely different worlds like i don't even know how you could perceive yourself into the other world well even you and i just talking a second ago and you were playing the devil's advocate for me i was enjoying it (laughs) yeah you were enjoying it um because every time it seemed that I had some type of rational reasoning, you had a reason for why that couldn't be true. And well, it's just, exactly. Yeah. And that's the point. You said rational reasoning. In my world, rationality and reasoning don't exist. Yeah. They're inventions. So, it's like you can come at me with a rational argument, but I'm saying that's just based on your perceptions of something that isn't actually reality. Yeah. You're imposing yourself onto what you perceive to be reality. And therefore, it's your world. Yeah. It's not mine. And so, therefore, your arguments based about how you see the world are exactly that. Yeah. They don't base, they're not based on reality according to postmodern thinking. And so, then if you keep taking that further and further and further and further, you could say the laws you created, the law, like we're talking like legal laws, laws of nature, social norms. All of these things, none of them are real. None of them have any basis. None of them, if they're based on science, well, no, because the science was created. And it's another thing, like the scientific method, if it was created by, say, white dudes, white guys, well, then it's going to be based on what they perceive, how they impose themselves on the world. Didn't you just impose, but doesn't that just impose the thought of them being white as a thing that you're putting yourself onto? Well, this because was they are white. You're perceiving it as white, as them being white, and that's white ideas. Then you're putting yourself on that thought. So but how then, do you how do you take whatever see, it is that you're is, saying and then bring this that is back? When, this is when we get back to what I was saying with the whole the the numeral as a part of like one of these philosophy ideas is that the numeral realm really comes down to irrationality and contradictions it's what the that's what their theory was for what the world actually what reality actually was reality is almost non-perceptive you can't perceive it because it's and informa- like ways they kind of i can't remember which one of the philosophers Sorry, it was before you go any further but, but, but like how do you ah but this is the point get into this argument no, no, no. thinking that you're i don't need to be rational because rationality doesn't exist in my world See, this is, and this is what I say. You can't even perceive yourself into that other world. Why? Because everything you base yourself off of, according to that rhetoric, does not exist. It, it exists in terms of the reality that we live in, but that reality is an optional reality. So, why do they still... So, why do people that think like this still uh, include themselves into the current social sphere or they can do it into better. the economic system like let's just say for example if they're hungry and they want food why do they go to the shop why don't they just go out and get their own food like go into i don't know like the jungle or woods and stuff and get their own food because well this is where it kind of becomes like political activism it's that i believe that you're all being oppressed by this reality and you just don't know it i know it i know you you may not feel oppressed mm-hmm. but i know you're oppressed and you just don't realize it yet and so therefore I'm going to do what I know is best for you, even though you don't know what it is, 
but I'm going to do it for you because you're oppressed and you don't know it and I'm going to set you free. <laughs> and that's like part of the thinking. And I was like, what the... F-? So, you're telling me that you know what's best and not best for me as an individual, but best for me as a group, class, so on and so forth. Like communism, it's I know what's best for the proletariat was to get rid of the bourgeoisie with critical race theory. It's like, I know what's best for the racial group and not the individuals within that group. It completely gets rid of the idea of individualism, which was kind of a byproduct of reason because individuals find reason. Whereas if reason doesn't exist, well, then you can't be an individual. See what I'm saying? Like it's two completely different realities. And then- so, when you have like conversations or arguments with these people, it's almost, it's almost pointless because they're not playing the same game. It's, it's like I'm playing tennis and they're playing basketball and we're trying to play a match together. It just doesn't work yeah. because no matter what I say, they can just turn around and go, well, that's based on your perception. It's semantics. It's logic and- Reasoning that is based on who you are as a person, based on your your race, age, sex. It's all based on those things. You're just projecting yourself onto your environment. And that's the way you say it. It's just semantics. And what I feel, how I feel, not, not the statistics, because statistics, according to my rhetoric, don't actually have an impact on the lived experience. So, it doesn't matter. What matters is the passion and will that I have because they're real. They're feelings. I feel them within me. They're not numbers on a board that you've created. It's a feeling within me and therefore it's real. Why is is it okay for children to impose their hunger onto other people and for children to make their parents go get them food? They're imposing that they're hungry and that that person should do something for them. I mean, we can argue that's just laws of nature. And that is how it goes, but that doesn't necessarily yeah, but, but have. But if it to doesn't be. align with your, if that doesn't align with your thought, then then how do you explain that? There always has to be some type of reason. And uh, even uh, if uh, it, uh, you said the R word, reason doesn't exist. That's the thing, though. Y- you have to do some type. We are always doing some type of reason, not just uh, not just in the outside world, but uh-huh. within. You said re- the way they say it is you act off of your will. Will is not reason. Okay, so let's just look at this for for example. You, I'm enjoying this. You, you, you're stuck. You, okay, you got a you got a a bee's nest, uh-huh. and you want the honey. Last right. time you stuck your hand in there, you got stung a lot, and it hurt. Right. But you really like that honey. So the next time it comes to that point, what is it that is between you thinking about doing it and? you looking at the consequences of last time. What is that between those two factors? Will. So, am, I, am I willing to do something? But at the point of whether or not those factors outweigh, if equally weigh, outweigh one another. Well, is my willpower strong enough? If not, no. But you have to reason with that. Mm-mm. Reason doesn't exist. There's no reason. There's no, I want it, but there's no reason behind that. It's just my will. It's, what if you're hungry? It's how I feel. I'm feeling hungry. Yeah. That's not reasoning. I'm feeling that. Mm. I haven't reasoned with myself that idea. I've just felt it. And therefore, my will reacts to my feelings and therefore I go do. So but you- the problem- you know, See, the problem I have with this sort of ideology is what about all the dark shit mm. that you feel a will to do? Because- it's like they it's like they perceive nature as rainbow flowers and sunshine unicorns and all of that and that everyone if left to their own devices with no social like stimuli. without not stimuli without the social norms being projected onto you you would be a happy humble human being it's like no there's some dark mo- <laughs> that kind of looks like the adam and eve perspective if you look well it, it. it's almost yeah well that's the thing it's like don't eat the tr- don't eat the fruit from the tree yeah and reason to them is the fruit on the tree mm. once you have reasoning then you've ru- you've spoiled the species it's gone bad 
That was how it was originally viewed. Mm. I should say that now in our modern day and age has taken more of a political turn and it's more that the institutions, the laws and everything have no basis. They're based- Well, no, they do have a basis, but it's based on white supremacy, misogyny and all these other ideals because the people who originally made them were white old dudes Mm. and therefore they projected themselves into all of it and therefore everything that was built upon that is based on those ideals. It's based on being white. It's based on being a man. It's based on whatever the age range was or whatever the time was. And therefore, it doesn't allow or therefore, it's oppressing anybody who doesn't fit into that group. And what needs to happen in order for that to be reversed, according to their thinking, is that you need to tear down the whole structure. Because if it's built like that from the ground up, then you have to tear it all the way down to the ground. That's the only way you can uproot this misogyny, sexism, mm. racism. It's, it's quite it's quite amusing because it's just like how do you how do you justify that whatever it is that you're going to do might just outweigh what it is that they've got because if you look at the you look at what happened with uh, Marxism is that they were trying to introduce uh, they were trying to introduce the uh, communism within uh, the bourgeois society saying that you know the the rich were oppressing the middle class and the lower class and you were being exploited. Yeah. They, were, they were saying that you were being exploited, but what it is that they were offering was better than what you were able to give, and that was your time and labor. So, therefore, you know, people were like, you know what, what you're offering to you may sound good, but to me, it's just like I give them that and I get this. Well, that was, and that so was, I'd rather that. Yeah, that was a problem with a lot of the Marxist presumptions is that capitalism was a zero one, uh, zero sum game that I get, you lose. Mm. every transaction I get you lose and it'll get to a point where I get enough and you lose enough that you're going to want to kill me the problem is is that's not how it actually worked it was I get you get I might get more than you but you still get yeah and you get something that you think is worth what you've given me yeah and that's kind of like what capitalism was based off of it's if I feel that what I trade you is worth what you're going to give me in return then I do it I don't lose I get. Otherwise, I wouldn't have given you in the first place. And especially with capitalism, like you could say with a monopoly, well, then I don't have a choice. I have to give you no matter what, or otherwise I don't receive. Say, for example, if you have a monopoly on water, well, then I have to give you whatever you ask for because yeah, if you, you don't, I die. Yeah. Whereas in the free enterprise of capitalism, if you charge too much for water and it can be done cheaper, and someone wants to do it cheaper, they will. Yeah. And instead of going to you, I will go to them. And you have two choices. Yeah. You either go bust or you lower your prices. Whereas, and so it's not a zero sum game. And yeah. that was a problem. And it said in the- um, It's an ever growing hierarchy. It doesn't, it doesn't always like hold itself with the same people in it. It's people that are wishing to climb up that hierarchy can. They, yeah. have, that, they have that will to do it. There's and, freedom within yeah. it. Yeah. And, that's the thing. and also like- Like I said, you can either change or go bust and some people don't change. They go bust. Exactly. You can go from the top to the bottom. And you can you can quite literally find these situations. They're everywhere. Yeah. I mean, if you go back twenty, thirty years, look at all the major shopping brands, I bet you like ninety percent of them don't exist today. Mm. Absolutely. Because they didn't change. They didn't change with the times. They went bust. It was like Blackberry. Blackberry had oh, a yeah. similar thing. You know, they were like, yeah, we don't want to have a keyboard on a touch screen. Yeah. Apple did it and bye bye Blackberry. <laughs> yeah. Done. Simple. Exactly. So it's, and that was the pro, and uh, I was saying in the book, it was like talking about the Marxist philosophy when it came to, because they called themselves the science, scientific socialists. And they were like, oh, yeah, uh, the way capitalism will work is that the middle class will end up disappearing the lower class will become massive and there will be few capitalists up the top and therefore the people at the bottom. And it's hilarious because the way they explain it later on as to why this didn't happen is like, what the fuck? Hmm. So there'll be so many people at the bottom and they'll be so upset, so mad that they will kill. They will uprise, kill, change everything. There'll be a revolution, kill everyone at the top. Never happened. Hmm. They kept making predictions for when it would happen. Never happened. And so then they were like, you know what it is? <laughs> you know why they haven't? Because capitalism has provided them with their basic needs, which is what they accused capitalism of not being able to do in the first place. 
but it did that. So, they changed it. They're like, capitalism gives you your basic needs and it numbs you with all these consumer products. And so, therefore, you're so comfortable and you, you don't know your own oppression because you're being masked from it with all these capitalist goods that you don't know that they're holding you down because you feel happy with your life or you feel satisfied. And what really needs to happen is that instead of socialism starting at the bottom and going to the top, we need to get a dictator in in the top to show you just how oppressed you really are because you don't realize it because you're living a life that you think is happy and good. And it's like, well, hang on. Isn't that what you were promising with socialism? You were saying, oh, it would provide everyone with their basic needs and they'd be able to sort of have a happy life and pursue whatever they want to pursue in the, the other time. That's what capitalism were doing. And they're like, no, 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 you're being, you're being oppressed. You just don't realize yeah, it. Exactly. You're having, you're living just, just too well that you don't realize it. And it was like, you're not, you're, sorry, before you go any further, but it's, it's just like what we said before. It comes down to your will. So if your will is stronger than, and let's just say from the perspective of putting a hand in a bee's nest and grabbing a bit of honey, if your will to have that honey over being in a lot of pain is stronger then you will do it. So that also, so if that, you know, implies with within the realms of will, then the will to work within a capitalist society is far stronger than the oppression that you apparently don't see. Your will is so much stronger than the oppression that you do not see that you don't even recognise. Well, that was that's that, that's what they argue though is that the oppression is there. You just don't see it, and it's what it's my job to make you see it. And then once you see it, you're going to be so upset, and you're going to be so mad that revolution will come. Yeah, and it just because you've changed the goalpost from being able to provide basic needs to then what it ends up becoming is closer to our day and age is well, it doesn't provide relative equality, meaning. Sure, the poorest person in America might be richer than most people in other countries. But in their relative situation compared to the other people that are in their own country, they're poor and therefore capitalism has failed. And so you've changed the goal. It's no longer whether or not you can provide basic needs. It's whether or not everyone gets an equal cut of the pie. And so you just keep changing the goal. For, and then after that, it was like, well, not only do that, and then they bring in the postmodernistic thinking of not only that, but the oppression is like built into the system. So it's masked so well because it's built into the very structure. And so you don't know any different. But if I was to show you different, then you would realize you would know. And that different is socialism. My, <laughs> what I don't understand is like what past example do you put up and go this is what you could have been because we were this once yeah <laughs> like is it the <laughs> soviet <laughs> union <laughs> this look at this this was you if you were smoking <laughs> it's like, but i don't smoke yeah but yeah. that would be you yeah but you don't know <laughs> doesn't that make you mad <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know that if you did smoke you'd have such a better life uh. <laughs> and so it's like uh soviet union no yeah hungary well, they went in there with tanks and slaughtered a bunch of people. No. I'm trying to think of... Uh, I think it was, a, uh, there was, uh, it was a whole list of countries. Just one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. Every single communist, socialist state has gone tits up. So, it's like, what, what example are you holding up and going, this could be you? And they don't go tits up unless they have a capitalist economic system. Uh, yeah, and then they because are able to... Because Australia is, in a lot of ways, socialist, but they have a capitalist, capitalist system. system. Yeah. And, this, and this is the thing. They say, you know, uh, we'll make one single class and we'll take whatever was from the overall classes and give it a div and divide it equally within that lower class. And what you get is like a pie with a lot of slices in it. You know, some of them start off with a big slice and then eventually those are divided into smaller slices. So, you know, everyone gets their Pie. little slice. But then as soon as you start taking away structures that are within a person's interest because they're no longer necessities, then that pie that was sliced into that way begins to shrink because it's no longer worth what is actually within the system. 
if you look at it from the perspective of, let's just say, we no longer need phones, but we've managed to build a an abundant wealth around phones and you take away phones and all, you still have that wealth. Well, because there's no longer anything that can value you, that money because phones is no longer within the system, you just have an abundance of money with no actual wealth within it. Mm. So the pie within itself shrinks drastically because you only have what is actually considered to be what you need. Yeah, you might have $100 in your pocket, but that can only buy you a loaf of bread because the wealth is no longer within the system anymore. It's just a bit of paper with a hundred dollars written on it that can only get you that that little thing over there well it was yeah what was it the one example they were talking about is according to soviet economics the the only thing one one shoe factory could make enough shoes to fit out the world and then they tried to do it and it didn't work and so then you know what they said instead we know what being barefoot is better (laughs) Oh my god <laughs> it's like i mean it was a metaphor but like the first part is true it's like you can have this idea that well this can service everyone and then when reality slaps you across the face you start to reason start to reason with the fact that huh that's not possible and the pro- like that was the thing with the ussr it was like this whole idea that the soviet economic system was going to be superior and then when reality slapped them in the face and turned out, no, it wasn't. And then they went, okay, well, maybe we're not economically superior, but we're morally superior because we don't exploit workers. We're not built on exploitation. And then when Khrushchev comes into power after Stalin, he has a meeting with some Congress and goes, yeah, all those are millions of people that we killed according to what you think is US propaganda. Yeah, we actually did that. Mm. Ah, yeah, <laughs> and it's like ah, oh, so you don't you don't hold the moral card either. And then you went down to Hungary and started sending tanks and shit to shoot up a bunch of protesters that were sick of being under the thumb of Moscow. Well, it's almost like they had the will <laughs> to find food. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay, so you don't have the economic, you don't have the morality. What is it that you do have? The philosophy? You have the philosophy. <laughs> that's all. You- and the thing is the philosophy. You can have the philosophy, but reality is still going to slap you in the face no matter what. And look, look I've, I've philosophized over this. I do a lot of philosophizing because <laughs> within, within this podcast, we need to have some type of reason for you and I to argument. If we agreed on everything, this podcast would be so boring. But like within the realm of philosophizing is that you can get into a position where you begin to think that you could be a righteous person within acting in a way of doing what you think to be the just thing. But if you don't counter in being human and you try and perform those things and it can it makes you miserable and it ends up making you look wrong, then your philosophizing no longer holds any type of fundamental ground. It's just a reality that you've made within your own mind. Or I could argue if I was really stubborn that... We just need to change the reality. Yeah, exactly. That's where it comes down to. It's no longer my idea doesn't fit into the reality. It's the reality doesn't fit into my idea. And therefore, if we can deconstruct the reality and reconstruct it in a way that it will fit my idea, well, then my idea has to work. It can't not work. The only thing that's wrong with my idea is everything else. Yeah. And if we change everything else, well, now my idea works. And my truth, according to postmodernism, is no more wrong than any other truth. It's no more wrong than scientific truth. It's no more wrong, wrong than how you feel or how anybody else feels because they're all equally true because according to the original thinking, your science doesn't perceive reality any better than what I can yeah. personally. And from that point, and this is a quote, I've never read Aldous Huxley, but have you heard of him? I have. I have heard about him so many times. I could be listening to a bit about a book that's completely irrelevant to anything that within what he said, but he's mentioned so many times. Aldous Huxley mentions, I wanted to change the world, but I have found that the only thing one can be sure of is changing oneself. No, change the world. Change the world. <laughs> and this And this comes from someone that has deeply understood many things he was he is considered a really 
big thing within the world of uh, philosophy and uh, understanding. He's gone into the whole idea of communism and looked at what type of world it has uh, uh, that it can create and stuff. And it's just when it comes to these types of situations where one thinks that seven billion need to change in order to fit within the reality, then how is it that we make reality fit in, fit within to seven billion? You can change it and create this type of thing to put everyone within it but it's a society you and i we do not continuously folk we don't talk about sex or sex we don't talk about gender we don't talk about skin color we talk about things that are outside of whatever it is that we can understand and we go back and forth and philosophize on an idea whether these ideas might be consistent for what it is but it's that we've come together and we've talked about something that we don't understand and we're kind of trying to create an understanding in the realisticness of what it, whatever it is that it is. And it's not like we impose those ideas on people. We simply talk about them. We allow people to come across and if they want to listen, they can listen. And if they want to bring it on into their world of understanding, they can. But we do not impose it on other people. And... To say that we, to create a reality within genders, size and all those types of things is absurd. It is completely absurd to think that like that is what's good for people. So you say that reality needs to fit within the person's understanding or whatever it is that that feels. But if I don't want to feel that, then you're imposing your reality on me. So how is it that you think that's what that is good for me if I don't want what it is that you're bringing to me? So is it that I change that reality to fit into my narrative? No, it's just you don't realize what you actually need. (laughs) And that was like, that was the thing. It was like, you don't know that you're being oppressed. You don't know that you're living this life that is holding you down. It's for me to show you. Mm. And and even one part of it goes into like the fact that the people aren't going to want to do it but they need to mm. because they don't know what's good for them. Yeah. But we do and we will show them and it's like, oh, What if I want to liberate my cells outside my body? What if I want to liberate the atoms that create the cells that manifested this person that is right now and then I want to re- liberate those atoms outside this person? When I just put a gun to my head and decompose within the next hundred years. See, you spoke about atoms and atoms don't exist because that's science. Yeah, but <laughs> for me to... Atoms are something within the realms of... Can, okay. can be seen the, as real. The, so, they exist in uh, the laws of science and they exist in the laws of whatever branches of science deal with atoms. But you can't prove to me that that's according to postmodernism logic you can't prove to me that that's any closer to reality because it's through your own perceptive organs and your mm. own perceptive organs have personality based on what who you are you can't prove to me that that's any more real than how i feel do you want to know how you can see it as something that's real go on tell me they're called microscopes <laughs> ah and what do you look through a microscope with Lenses. your eyes and your eyes are a sensory organ that's based on you and have got a personality and therefore what you perceive has no harder basis on reality than how I feel because my feelings are intrinsic and real. What you see is extrinsic and up for debate. So let's just say, for example, I do see these and for the first time I do look at this, I'm in complete amazement by it. It makes me feel amazed Mm. that i get to see such a thing so if that thing that brings me in an amazement and then leads me on to looking further into it and then i have this abundance of uh, understandings Mm. of how they react with one another to that person that is somewhat Uh, that's that's your truth that's my that's my truth but your truth is no more true than my truth See what I'm saying? So, you lose. This is my point. You can't have an argument with someone who lives in this world because you lose every time. Because it's no longer based on reason. It's no longer based on logic. It's no longer based on facts. It's no longer based on stats. It's based on semantics, perception, and this idea that you can't base anything outside of yourself as truth or Mm. reality. 
and that everything that you're perceiving is based on your sex, your uh, race, your age, all these things that are generalized characteristics and therefore the world you see is personalized in that way. Mm. And so therefore your truth is no more real than mine and therefore it shouldn't have priority over mine. So if we look at it from the understanding of economics, so or ec- the things that contribute to economics, so we would have had an understanding and let's just say you're a postmodernist mm-hmm. 100 years ago. Oh, I am a postmodern. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at... So, if I come to you with an understanding that when I put, fo- when I put pres- uh, pressure in something, like a piston, right, and it causes that piston to jolt, and I get a series of pistons to move... I describe that to you. And right. from the postmodernist view, right. you say that isn't that and like going into whatever it is that you're saying, those aren't truths, those are your truths. Yeah. But then as like time goes on, I build the car. Right. And the car is able to move. Mm-hmm. I'm able to put products within that car and take them to a place that makes things somewhat easier for you yep. to get to. Right. So then there's a system within economics uh, that we've created and it's made it more economic economical for people but why does economics take priority over anything else well if you perceive because, it to because be i truth. could i could say to you that well where'd you get that metal from for the pistons you've harmed the environment it's not environmentally friendly you've taken one negative for a positive but why does that positive take priority over the other negative they're all equal they're all truth so therefore if i perceive that that negative not to be worth the positive i'm no more right than you are okay so but but look at it from this perspective. If like, if you want the thing is, I don't, if you want to make no, the loaf this of bread, is my point. I don't have to look at it from your perspective according to my views. If it's how I feel, it's how I feel. My feelings are just as true as any perspective you put forward, because you're perceiving things. I'm feeling things. Neither one is based more in reality than the other. This is my point. You can't argue. There is no argument to be had because they can I have can, this argument though. But they. But the thing is. They're, what they do is completely to what different to what they say. Contradiction. So they're allowed to contradict themselves yeah. within contradicting others. If it gets me closer to my goal, yes. Because how else am I supposed to tear apart the staples? This doesn't, that this you've doesn't actually like align itself with any type of a fundamental thing. This is an ah, actual exactly. But what are your fundamentals built on? This is a sociopathic, nihilistic narcissistic anti-realism yeah (laughs) anti-realism thank you that's that's what it is that's what it is gaslighting system yeah and that's the whole point it's how else am i supposed to tear apart your system it's funny because it tries to show the fundamentals of oppression through oppressing through dismissing which may oppress someone because if I take According pride, perspe- if I take pride in that, and you come forward and you start telling me that what it is that I think is wrong by dismantling everything that is, then you've made me feel in a way disappointed. I've just had to, I've just had to come across as someone that has in put their views on me, and that's made me oppressed. So how does it that the oppressor comes out and says the oppressed comes out and shows me that I've been oppressed by oppressing me? And that's okay. Well, if the system's built to you, which according to postmodernism it is, you're a straight white man, <laughs> you... This is another thing they're going into. It's like, <laughs> if you're a straight white man, the whole system's built on your ideologies and ideals. And therefore, my oppression of your system is just me deconstructing it so that we can rebuild it in a way that's better for everyone. So, it airs on the side of being thoughtful for everyone but then there was also another branch so that so in order to create equal equalness within the oppressed and oppression yeah oppressive states there still needs to be oppress oppression there needs to be bloody revolution like literally bloody revolution according mm. to like because what was the com- the com- whole communist thing it was there needs to be a rev- revolution we need to kill off the bourgeoisie to get the proletariat to a better place yeah with all these revolutions, we need to kill off group A to make it better for everyone else. We need to kill off the oppressor or un- 
uh, take away the oppressor's powers in order to make equality for everyone. Now, yeah. the whole idea is that one group is oppressing the other. That's that's the key tenet, is that one group needs to be dealt with so the rest of the groups can flourish. Flourish. Exactly. That's what all of these things are. It's mm. like... And it just makes it just by the sounds of it, it just makes everything well, think, well, think that about, But up. think about everything you hear in the political cycle today. Mm. What is it? It's oppressor oppressed. Mm. It's all this postmodernism. Yeah, I kind of want to just because like we've how long we've, we've been touching in for a we're while almost, a bit. Yeah, we're just on this, and you know, and this is the thing. I'm like, this could be a fucking ten hour podcast. <laughs> yeah, it, no one, nobody could win winning these types of things. So I kind of want to before it gets too to be too long i kind of want to touch on the uh the other ideologies based around now so what i've got here is critical race theory gender studies post post colonialism the postmodern feminist queer studies disability studies fat studies and probably more some of these even link up and create super like binary at the benefit of creating one's own identity yeah but this is so all those things you've just listed are all sciences or they critique sciences that already exist based on the thought that those sciences that already exist Mm. are built on ideologies that don't tell reality but are instead the sex gender and age of the people who create them imposed upon other people so say for example the eurocentric or what they say is the eurocentric idea of health a more slender bodied person well that's not reality that's just the person or the group or society that made those sciences laws or that imposing themselves on all those other groups of people that don't fit that description so therefore they critique them and break them down to a point to include everybody say for example obese people when it comes to because they're not slender they don't fit the eurocentric ideal yeah so therefore the eurocentric ideal needs to be broken down to a point where it can include fat people because science isn't reality according to postmodernism it's not reality it doesn't tell the truth yeah it tells a truth based on a set environment that's been built by the people who have those ideologies it's a truth. It's not the truth, according to postmodernism. Not according to me. I'm just playing devil's yeah. advocate. According to postmodernism. And therefore, what needs to happen is the deconstruction of that to include all peoples or certain groups of people that aren't included in the original idea so that they are then accepted as being the truth or yeah. a truth. And therefore, the truths that the critical theories come to are no more truthful or sorry- are no less truthful than the withstanding truth that currently fits in society. And therefore, according to postmodern, well, according to theory, in theory, they should be able to be interswapped. And that's it. So you should base laws, health, things like that, based on individuals' characteristics or group, sorry, characteristics and not the set model. Mm. Because the set model, according to postmodernism, doesn't take into account all of the nuances of these groups. But the thing is, if you're obese, you're obese. Yeah. It doesn't matter what race you are. Yeah, exactly. If you're obese, if you're, you're obese. And if you want to like become a runner and you and you want to win these running, uh, these <laughs> athletic things, but you're ob- you're obese, and then you turn around and say that the sport oppresses you because of your weight, then you're just not quite built for that sport, and because that's and that sport may have been built, but others other people genuinely like being uh, participating within that sport. But if someone turns around and says this doesn't fit for within myself, within my own frameworks of self, then that's an oppressor, and therefore that needs to be con- deconstructed. It no longer becomes a sport of running; it becomes a thing of what that person wishes to feel, something that's within the framework of benefiting everyone within it well, running just more becomes something that was ideally built for people who are fit mm. and not inclusive and therefore is oppressive to people who don't fit within that class so what about the people that do want to be fit and do want to be healthy you're fat phobic <laughs> but that's con- that's, and, and that's where it comes back see this, and what i've noticed right now is that like 
Well, you've, hang you've on, no, no, no. To, you've Actually, let's break, let's break that down. Why do you want to be fit? Because I think it benefits me. Based on your perceptions that society gives you? Based on how it makes me feel because I've been fat before and it makes me uncomfortable personally. But why does it make you uncomfortable? Is it Does it make you uncomfortable because the world built around you isn't built for bigger people? See, this is, this is no, the no, thought no. train that they go down. Is it's it- when going to bed... And not having a good night's sleep because you're so heavy that you literally cannot actually... And this, and this was the thing. I got to the point where I was like fat enough to have very uncomfortable sleeves. My back was always hurting. I felt like because my back was never hurting, I was never having a good night's sleep. It wasn't because the mattress that I was sleeping <laughs> on was oppressing me. It was because I was fat and it hurt. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you came to that realization. <laughs> <laughs> so what, a, and it was actually within, and when I used to think bulking was, a, was the thing, uh, I, w- I would get to the point where I'd start, I started off 75 kilos and I got to 98 kilos. Damn. And that is a lot of weight for Ch- someone in my stature. Chunky if anyone boy. has seen me, I'm not, not the tallest. Um, hey. So for me, that is very helpful. Huh? I was going to say Short King. Yeah, Ash, oh, Ash always <laughs> called me Short King. I didn't even know what it was. All I hear is Short King. I'm, I'm like, pretty sure there's, a, me there's a song King? written for that as well. Uh, I'm surprised that hasn't been That's your anthem. Yet. Uh, <laughs> Ashley's always like, you're my Short King. I'm like, oh, what even is that? Um, but, that but that's the thing, like, because I prefer having a good night's sleep and mm. feeling within myself that I can do things within my own capabilities. Maybe... Let's just say, for example, if a lion is chasing... Oh, I wouldn't say lion. Uh, let's just say if something was chasing me and I feel like I'm in a position where I'm constantly being uh, having to run for my life and being fitter actually helped me get away better, efficiently. That which was in the environment was not... Let's just say that thing was naturally within the environment. But I wasn't... I can't change the fact that that thing wants to hunt me down and kill me and eat me. I can't change that reality. It's built within that animal's truths. So if I lose, if I lose weight, so well, I can get away and save my own truth. Well, that animal's a bigot, so that doesn't change the <laughs> fact that it's going to kill me and eat me. I know, but so, so the point, like, would be that if something doesn't. Well, the problem is, is that in our, in our day and age, we don't face anything like that. So no, no, you absolutely. have the freedom. The, that's why the, I that's say the point. that society's gone feral when it comes up with conclusions as such. Well, the problem is, is that in order for you to come up with these conclusions or at least be able to practice them and go about gallivanting with them is you need to be in a society where you can even have the freedom to think up these ideas in the first place yeah. and have the time to be able to sit with them and ponder and live a life that you get to choose all of these different directions and things. You're sitting on top of this framework, living this life, and then saying, no, we need to tear down the bricks that are even allowing me to do this in the first place. And who even knows within my own capabilities of experience that I could survive in a world as such? And this is why I'm going to stop going back to postmodernistic thinking. Thank you, because I'm exhausted. (laughs) (laughs) And that's that's the point. You exhaust me enough to the point where I just 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 give up. You give me ground. And if mm. you keep giving me ground... I don't even feel like you've even tried. You just had to keep saying contradictory things and I've had to actually like... This was another wrap quote. Wrap my brain around Postmodernism this. doesn't require me to be right. Yeah. It requires me to be interesting. Mm. I don't have to be right. I yeah. just have to be interesting. And there's even uh, quotes around this. If the things that which you are describing only make sense to you or you have to describe it in such a way that is so complex, then it doesn't exactly make sense. Mm. If something can be said within it one sentence then it's actually hold some validity you, or you some have an truth. Under, you have a proper understanding the more yeah. simply you can describe something the better understanding you have yeah. of it. exactly and if you just feel like you have to continuously wrap your mind into critiquing the littlest of things just to hold some groundwork what well, the thing it within, is within 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 an actual sorry within an actual society of people that want to talk and want to have you know genuine conversations I don't blame people for wanting to push you out and therefore making you oppressed. I don't blame them for doing no such But I also don't blame them for giving me ground just so I shut the fuck up. <laughs> and it's been in that position. And it's been in those uh, positions before. We've all heard the quote, choose your arguments. Why would I choose an ar- Why would I pick to have an argument with someone as such as that? It's just like, 
yeah, you you will be right within your framework, but within the framework of what everyone else is pursued in, no one gives a shit what you think. Well, this is the thing. It relies on the fact that I can find enough people that are disgruntled and displaced by the society they live in that I can build a decent force of people behind me to actually start shit happening. Yeah. The problem is, is that you need to find those people. And and that's exactly why it never actually gained itself some type of a grounding within the earlier stages of critical, uh, within the critical theories and stuff is because... Well, that's why there was no revolution. People just didn't see it as a necessity. And, you know, no one wants to exactly spend all their time having to critique everything, you know, everyone, people just want to go about their own lives and do something that actually has some merit and reward. I don't find it very rewarding that putting people in a position of complete exhaustion, even though they've given me some type of logical understanding or reason to say why you could be wrong. And you've just literally did it until they're exhausted without any type of argument that holds validity within the circumstance. I don't see that as an exact win. It just goes to show that you're a moron and can't exactly. But this is this is what it hold all goes. yourself within an argument. You have to be contradictory. You have to be a loser to be to become a winner. You know. But the thing, and this is what I say, is you can't even perceive the world they're living in because I mean, I've read, I read the book. I kind of I understand where they're coming from. I don't like where they're coming from. Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea. I think I, I can understand. I can as understand well, why they do it though, because the reality they believe in, everything we've built on top of it shouldn't exist. Yeah. Everything in the modern age shouldn't exist. According, if you just, if you take a turn, I mean. Originally, I think at this point it's for political gain. I don't think they actually believe. No, I think it's the original for political. Gain. I think it's a. It's just a way to fuck over your political adversaries yeah. and gain ground. But I think originally the people who believe in like the original branches of postmodernistic thinking, it's literally that everything since the Enlightenment was wrong. We've gone in the complete wrong direction, according yeah. to them. Whereas I don't like that. I don't want to be living in a hut, in a feudal society somewhere and dying of disease. Yeah. I quite like all the modern day technologies, technologies and, and stuff that I have stuff, yeah. that I have before me. Yeah. It's just it and the thing is like you can keep tearing brick after 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 brick. After brick. But you're only laying your own brick after every brick you take down. Well, that's it. And I was going to say... your own system. (laughs) Yeah. And I was going to say, what are you left to actually stand on? But the problem is they are, well, I guess a problem for me, not for them. They are laying their own bricks in place. But uh, what was I saw? I wrote something earlier and it was... I was thinking about it because... Okay. What's easier to do? Create or destroy? Destroy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and that's my whole argument with like a religion. You know, religion takes whatever man isn't and gives him the opportunity to become, because you know it says you you are you are dust, you are this, you're that, and you will act within what can be understood as the devil devil's way. It's always easy to act in that way. That is just the norm, but to act in a justifiable and a godly manner is something that can be. Uh, quite uh rewarding for everybody yeah constructive and rewarding and and it has definitely shown that it is constructive and rewarding in current circumstances but yeah and that's the point is i can critique something i can take an institution and critique it till it falls apart i didn't have a single input in making that yeah i didn't build it at all and the people who built that would have worked a lot harder than the me who's trying to critique it and tear it apart with absolutely no experience and like or time in that institution i can look at it from the outside as an outsider and say well this doesn't make sense this doesn't make sense this isn't based in reality this is false these statistics are bullshit so on and so forth but it's like we were talking about in i can't remember which episode it was but it's like if you don't know incentives restrictions and reasons for why it operates the way it does. You can't find that out without actually being within it. And so you sit there and critique and critique <laughs> and critique. And it's, you know, you haven't even got the full picture. 
Yeah. You're just sitting there tearing it apart. And also, you don't know what happens once you tear it apart exactly. because you don't actually know what it's doing. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those things you don't... It might be that little brick that's holding up the vast amount of bricks. You don't know what you got till it's gone. Yeah, exactly. And then once it's gone, well, fucking... <laughs> yeah, all the things that you were defending no longer exist in a society. Oh. oh, okay. So it's just like, for example, you know, everybody's saying that, you know, we need to get vaccinations. And if you view life on the postmodernist, postmodernist theories and stuff, and then, but you turn around and say, yeah, I believe in vaccinations. And then the thing that you wanted to destroy ends up taking that with it. Then it's just like, oh, well, the thing that was benefiting me yeah. is no longer around. So it's just like, I've just put myself in a position where not only did I, I won, but I lost much more in the process of that. And this was also the thing with, this is also the reason why I believe postmodernism now is just used for political gain instead of what its original thought pattern was is because according to the postmodern way of thinking, you should be able to sit anywhere on the political fo- uh, line and have that truth. Hmm. No matter where you sit, there's a truth there to be had. So, therefore, postmodernists should randomly distribute themselves across the political lines mm. because no matter where you sit, there's a truth. Yeah. And no truth is more justified than the other. And yet, when we actually look, they're all far left. Yeah. So, then that makes me think, okay, well, are we still looking at postmodernism as like th- its original thought? Or have we turned it into a political weapon yeah. to be used? And I feel like it's kind of become... Because originally it was the far right that was using it. Yeah. The like super religious dogmatic types. It was anti-science, anti-enlightenment. And now it's done a complete 180. And so I don't think it's actually about the original thought pattern behind it anymore. I think it's now just more taken on its deconstruct... Well, it's- implementing what is what they want yeah it's it's, it it's just used to deconstruct and yeah. to, to basically devour and i think it's quite disturbing because you know there are people that are in situations where they are oppressed by something and you know uh i think in terms of like uh girls and stuff that have had to go through the struggle of patriarchy and uh, other things throughout the throughout that time did seek t- uh, a just Equali- cause. A just cause, an equality within what it is that they were asking for. And they got it. Yeah. You know, everyone was equal in a society to do what it is that they wanted. And the people that have gotten to that point or got us to that point and which a lot of people have benefited. And now they're being told that it's stupid because you ask for equalness. And equalness means your equal was something that is considered to be a just thing and what i what i've uh, come to notice it as is just a fit and healthy individual that can h- help operate into society into society and they've become a part of that and because it was a site no you didn't take into consideration all causes like uh, race and uh queer gender all those types of things you didn't take into consideration of that so therefore your position doesn't hold any type of validity within uh society itself and it's just like well hang on are you sure about people that were, you know, being put in a position where they were having to suffer with being married to an abusive husband now have the opportunity to, if they want to walk out, they can. They don't have to think about, and they don't have to stay with those people. They can actually leave and do what it is that they think is best for themselves. You know, one step at a time. We don't have to, we don't have to head on attack something at once to, bring equality at them just think even though it's horrible that people that you know some people saw things as considered to be just like it was for a long time and it wasn't always like this where uh, slavery was seen as uh, black uh, as black people it was that whoever was most vulnerable was going to be used for the uh, yeah. other people as, a, as an advantage and that's exact you know europeans enslaved other europeans asians enslaved other asians it was it was always what it was and it was that people within that uh it, within the area of europe that were built some type of a uh, thing that can defend themselves were no longer being put to actual slavery so they begin they began to look at other countries that could give them what they were after yeah the cost was no longer worth 
what you get out of it. Exactly. You lose too many lives to gain what you wanted, which yeah. was slaves. Exactly. And that's when they started looking at Africa and, you know, getting slaves from there. It, and it was really hard for people within that time to get slaves because in Africa you were, I think it was the age, so the longest you could actually, uh, for a person that from Europe could survive within Africa was only up to a year because they would just have died from yeah, diseases. With diseases within that area. So it ended up... Uh, Africans enslaving other Africans but and selling them to the Europeans. And then it went to America. And because of those are the people that were the most vulnerable within that time were sent over to America to be enslaved, enslaved, they would have seen as there is only one type of person that is being enslaved and that is Africans. Yeah. And it's wrong. I think it's totally unjustifiable for why... Uh, we should be enslaving any type of people, but to justify why it's right because of skin colour was only an argument that they were using. So that way they could make it so it was okay to keep doing it. And it was how it continued to play in time. And we're completely ignoring history and actual facts that actually happened for a thing that works within the frames of an argument. You've got a conclusion. You've just seeked out the information for that conclusion. And it's not entirely true. Well, also, you keep seeking information. You come to conclusions and it gets to the point where we go, you know what? Slaves is a pretty fucking bad idea. And you come to the conclusion, we shouldn't have them. And so, what happens? We don't have them. Exactly. It didn't end up to the emancipation. And it got to the point where... So, where... uh, all these are races where, where America is seen as racist and stuff. We're the ones that actually liberated uh, other countries from slavery. In the end, other people, people that had slaves were so embarrassed that they had slaves. They literally let them set them free. And obviously it would have, they, like, they could walk off the farm and just go, okay, no worries. And that was it. Obviously it had a bad economic uh, factor for them as they were heading into a society that was already a little bit ahead. But before the 60s, they were actually improving in the in the economic system. They were making their own way. And it was – Thomas Sowell actually goes into that and says they were actually uh, – people that were oppressed by slavery were actually making their own comeback into the economic system, building their own wealth and uh, capital within the society. And may, maybe just talking about America, but like it's where – But also America find was – a lot of information. But there's a lot of information within that area. Like it's, it's really hard to find information within Australia, I, I believe. But I've also tried America was one of the first places to get rid of slavery and yet we see it as one of the most disgusting. Like we're like, well, that's, that's slavery, right? It was like, well, yes, we can look at it that way, but we should also look at the fact that out of any places in the world to get rid of it, it's one of the first. Exactly. And they liberated other countries from doing that as well. So, it's... We get we get to this position where we, where we, you know, can say all these things as to help solidify an argument, but it's just like, you're only doing it within the means of your own problem. And there has been barriers. There has been barriers over time to actually allow people to build themselves up. It's not just uh, people of races, you know, uh, the sexes and uh, equality, other equalities and stuff. And in time, and it, it began with people having prejudices towards those people because it was different. If you are someone that white, if, if you're someone that has only been within a society of other white people for like many, many years, and then all of a sudden you come to see someone of a different skin colour, do you not think that's going to come at some shock? Are you not going to question whether or not you should feel like, is this okay? And if no one's got information about these people that are of different skin colour, then it's within your best interest to assume that am I in a position where I'm okay or am I in a position where I'm not okay? To us today, like we just know that they're people. It's yeah, just how the true. it's how it's, it's just a, where the where they've been where people have been centered in the environment that has conditioned their skin color. To yeah, be exactly. You've literally just adapted to your environment. Exactly. That's but it. In a time where we do not understand that, it's like uh, yeah. But what allows us to understand that science? Exactly. And there was prejudices uh, within uh, countries that told that told people that they couldn't have. Uh, like colours had to be at the back of the bus and, you know, over time we've 
change those things because it's wrong. It is yeah, very it's, wrong. It's disgusting. And as soon as like we started actually getting somewhere, it's just like we thought, okay, well, it's okay to start giving people that may have been oppressed in the past money to live their lives and stuff. But it just goes to show that there's been a position where because they've got something, why would they need to seek out something better than what they've already got? This is like you and I, if we quit our jobs today, we wouldn't exactly like what the government would give us. No. We'd have the incentive to go out and get better again. But, then but if you're someone that's always been on that, why would you take a risk in getting that? You're going to lose whatever it is that you're doing right now for less. Uh, so you're not doing anything for less, whereas that you actually have to give yourself to that cause to, and if you to get it, something. And if you see it as a zero-sum game, if you see it as I give and lose, yeah. well, then of course you're not going to want to do exactly. that. Exactly. And that's how Marxists saw the whole economy. That was you give your labor and you don't receive what it's worth in return and therefore you'll have an entire massive majority of the population will turn around and say, well, pff, screw you. Yeah. I want to kill you and want it different. But it never came to fruition. Never yeah. happened. And it got to the point where it became embarrassing to make predictions because they were wrong every time. Yeah. It's just... Yeah, the whole postmodernism thing kind of... I get... I do, I can't, Look. I think the philosophy has something I good think the offer. philosophy has an interesting point to make. Yeah. Putting it into practical use seems almost impossible. Yeah. Because it is so counter to everything that makes up a liberal democracy that you'd have to... Which is what the end goal would be completely overthrow everything and start a new you can't build it off of what we currently have and to say that what it is that it has to offer after that is going to be better you have no idea you might hey, not you your might. truth is no more valid than mine baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we can see through past and past again that any country that goes into those types of ideologies of thinking that we can decide what's good for you always happens to end in people dying and the civil war the countries that were operating within the frames of the civil within the frames of civil war times people uh, countries that converted to com socialist communism ideals suffered greatly with dramatic losses of lives civil war or cold war cold war sorry sorry cold war and uh, suffered great the people suffered so much within those within those ideals and it's just like why would we want to put ourselves into those positions if i hear that and then you say we can do that exactly the same way they said it in point a where we are in point b it's just like well that's happened so many times and they said that as well yeah. what makes it going to be any different this time it's not they just haven't done it right <laughs> Look, give me well, a the fucking break the problem is is if you were on the other side, you could come up with argument after argument. But exactly. the problem is, is don't say it, don't look at what it says it does. Look at what it actually does. Exactly. And don't and be afraid to have your own opinion about yeah. something, but don't be an idiot about it. And if you look at what it actually does or what it's actually done, um, yeah, the track record ain't that great. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't want to be, you know, part of the uh, millions and millions and millions that have to die in order for my in order for my country to secure socialism or communism exactly you can just look at the ussr cambodia vietnam uh what's the other country korea china hungary hungary venezuela germany when they were after world war Two. there's an abundance of <laughs> places that have operated within those things and it always happened to end up in such a position where people were like we'd rather the things that you say we shouldn't have because what we've got right now doesn't seem to be cutting it yeah all right <sighs> i reckon that's it this so is, we wrap it up there this, this could, is exhausting this, i mean i feel like we barely even covered shit but <laughs> i feel like what we've done though is that we've with you having i think you playing a devil's advocate and me sort of fighting it has uh, sort of given this perspective is that no matter how good my rational my rational understanding yeah. i still i'm not and critical that, about you right now I'm like, that, you're gonna judge me and that's the problem is you can't have a rational argument with someone who doesn't believe 
in the need for rationing in the first or the reason the need for reason mm. in the first place i feel like if it comes and like we've had this argument and i feel like if it ever comes into this position and you're someone that has to deal with these such situations if you don't feel like you can honestly give anything to argue towards that just walk away don't even give your time to it because it's just let them think that they've got some type of authority or power over the situation. Just let them. They don't. They don't see this, the world the same way you do. And that's the problem. They make like, them. They subordinate themselves from human beings. I'm more than happy to take feedback from people, have a conversation with someone. The problem is, this is one of the conversations where I can't. I can't. Yeah. Because I literally cannot. Yeah. Exactly. The way you perceive reality, and not just reality, but ev- like. When I say reality, like usually I'm, when I'm talking about the way you perceive reality, it's like a certain aspect of. This is you perceive, if you're looking at like the origins of, if you perceive it the way the original postmodernists did, your reality shares almost nothing in common with mine. Yeah. It's like, it, it sounds bad. It's like me trying to talk to an alien. Yeah. Except I'm trying to speak in English about Earth and you're trying to speak in goobity gook about X, Y, Z. <laughs> yeah. We can't, it's never going to happen. Exactly, exactly. We can, and and the problem is, is that as we've able to, and this is like the thing with like uh, two different political parties and stuff, you have A and B, and A and B get together and create an argument, but it's the thing that comes between A and B that creates the the walkway for people to continue walking through. It's because one has one idea as good and one oh, one idea is like building up the society. One has one idea of making sure that people within the society are working good and we're going back and forth, back and forth. But it's between those two arguments that create the equality within the frameworks of society. Democracy. That, but yeah, democracy. And the thing is, if but you also think that for you your, to- post-mod- sorry, if yep. your postmodern view and my view cannot coincide, then that, then that, within itself should be weary because we cannot come to any type of agreement. Well, why do you think that I want there to be socialism and communism instead of a libertarian democracy? Because your libertarian democracy doesn't work with my worldview. Yeah. So and that's, that's, the, that, that's, that's the point is there is no way around it. In order for my worldview to work, there either has to be, there has to be like a communist like socialism yeah. because that's the only reality in which my stance can have grounding. Yeah. It won't work in a liberal democracy. And therefore, that's why most people who think this way lean towards socialism and communism. Yeah. Because otherwise, it just doesn't... You can't have this thought pattern in a democratic society. So, just as we wrap it, before we wrap it up, did you see the AOC in America had... Um she lives in New York and she's enforcing mass mandates and she's restrictions, lockdowns and all those types of things. And then she goes to Florida where it's like no masks, no vaccine <laughs> mandates, no lockdowns. She was seen there with her partner drinking cocktails with no mask on. <laughs> and I believe it was uh, the... Senate? Sen- oh, something, something on the lines of that. And said, when you, when your restrictions are so harsh, you don't even want to be around them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, God. yeah, it's double double standards all the time. It always comes. And then, and then what she did was she turned around because they they said that. And then because her partner was... They shouldn't have gave her the flame to light this fire. Um, they turned around and said, oh, because her partner was wearing like her sandals. And so <laughs> one of the guys commented about him airing out his disgusting feet and then she turns around and says uh something on the lines of the fact that you have to throw yourself at me uh something about you wanting me within a sexual framework you have to throw yourself at my partner's feet or something (laughs) and it completely contradicted everything about the argument just to put it within that framework and i was just like that that little thing that you uh, said back then is got the postmodern view written all over yeah. it. It's ignoring the facts and just going for the thing that can only hold you. Your truth. At your How you feel. truth within that argument, yeah. And I was just thinking, if you hadn't gave her the feel for that argument, you would have, had, she yeah. would have just had nothing to stand on. But you gave her the feel and that's where it's wrong. Oh, well, we got to have a bit of fun every now and then. Yeah, exactly. All right, no worries. We'll start wrapping it up now. All right. Thank you guys for listening. All right, catch you. See you later. Ciao.